Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I'm going to do some disassembly and maintenance on this big guy right here. This is the uh, Hogue Knives Doug Ritter um, RSK-1 Mark II uh, with the 20 CV steel. So, um, there we go. Let's go ahead and pop this guy open. Looks like T10 there, maybe T8, and just optical illusion. But, uh, oh, okay, that's T10. Beautiful. That is a non-free spinning pivot. Thank you, Hogue. And let's go ahead and pop this loose. By the way, I've just voided the warranty. Holy threadlocker, Batman. Look at this action. Is this grease? What do we have here? No, that's just an insane amount of threadlocker. Well, okay. That's a thing. Cool. Um, that was ineffective. All right. Well, um, so let's go on ahead and, um, yeah, take this guy apart here. That's the pivot screw here. Do I want to do a full takedown on this? Here's what I'm going to do instead. So, this is uh, a system that is remarkably similar to an axis lock. Um, that is not a clone or anything. That's not a problem. It's the case now that the axis lock trademark is... Uh, the cop, uh, whatever the heck the thing is, patent, I think, um, has expired. Therefore, it is not a problem that um, the other people are producing knives that look a lot like axis locks. That's totally fine. Um, the, uh, but this is, uh, I, I do want to take this guy at least partially apart, um, just so we can see what's going on in the inside. That said, usually for an axis lock knife, um, the only thing that you really need to do is to pop out the pivot and then treat it like an integral. I've done that a few times with the Benchmates. Actually, I'll do that again in a second here, but I wanted to take this apart just to look at the construction. So what we've got here is some heavy pocketing inside these G10 scales. We have some metal inserts into which the um, screws are going for the pocket clip there. And then we have this set of internal liners here. And with this, we can actually see how this works. We've got an axis lock bar here, or I'm sorry, whatever the heck lock they want to call this. I'm going to call it an axis lock because it looks very similar to an axis lock. Um, but anyways, you've got this locking mechanism right in here. Whole thing covered in some kind of an oil of grease, which is fine. Um, but you, you can see here that this guy... This spring pushes the thing open. I mean, again, this looks, for all intents and purposes, like an axis lock. Now, that said, um, so this is the construction. The liners are internal, but they are not full length. It's not like a full full size in liner or anything like that. So um, now what I can go ahead and do is put this part back on. You didn't need to do this. As you were disassembling, this is mostly illustrative. Like, how what what is the extent the line is on this guy? Um, you didn't need to do this at all. But I can go on ahead and uh, actually let me... Yeah, yeah I probably should. Um, I'll go ahead and rub a little bit of uh, frog lube onto the inside of the line is here. Just now that I... Because I wiped off some of that oil. Frog lube is just an anti-corrosive sort of compound. There. And there we go. All right. Now what we do is we put this whole thing back on. And I'm just going to retighten all those screws that I've loosened. Okay. Um, which were all, by the way, T8. T8 was the correct answer. And indeed, T8's not a bad answer. I'm going to use some um, blue Loctite to put everything back together here. And I put all my screws in the order they came off the knife, so we should be able to find this. Um, it's worth noting, though, that none of these standoffs are shouldered. What I mean by that, you can see right there, they are just flat up against those scales. And so you're going to need to keep that in mind as you are uh, assembling, disassembling, reassembling the whole affair. Uh, why is this not wanting to go cleanly? Oh, crap. I've partially lifted the spring off. So you can see here that this spring is coming out from over the lock. Uh, okay, hold on. Wrong screwdriver. Back with the program, Nick. I see, that's why. See, this is the kind of little pain in the butt that you end up with when you do these kinds of disassemblies on axis lock style knives. That's why I recommend the path that I usually take and that I'm about to show you. I'm just going to press this back onto here. Beautiful. Okay, now I should be able to drop this back down. Everything should fit as expected. Beautiful. All right, one more time with feeling. Nope, nope. this guy. So, put that on there, Titan. This, again, like I said, is voiding the warranty. Hogue is still afraid of its customers, warranty-wise. 
Um, that's ugly as sin. I'll talk about that later on. But guys, um, keep that in mind. If you're ever curious about any of the tools I'm using for this process, by the way, go ahead and go to nickshabazz.com slash tools, and that will link you to a video talking about my uh, knife disassembly toolkit. It details every damn thing that's in there. All right. So beautiful. Um, now what we can do is the way that you should actually do this. If you are planning to do this yourself, that first part was just purely informational. The way that you should do this is simple. You remove this pivot screw, as I have there. And then what you do is you pull the axis lock back a little bit, and you just push the pivot out like I just did there. I just used this little watch spring bar tool, and I popped it right out. And so you end up with a pivot just sitting there laying. And now watch. We've got the blade out. Okay, so what we can see here is that the liners haven't shifted. This whole handle is effectively hollow, and an axis lock is just this sliding bar that goes back and forth in there. Um, I also have two washers in there that I'll go ahead and retrieve. There we go. And that's beautiful. And now everything, you know, stays together. I just need to clean the parts that move, right? Non-moving parts don't tend to need all that much cleaning. And so they don't tend to collect that much gunk, and when they do collect gunk, it doesn't tend to matter so much. So um, what we're able to do here is just clean off the parts that are super relevant to the process. And I'll go ahead and I'll grab a new cleaning swatch. It's always funny to me when I'm super cheap with these, like, oh, I can reuse one from the last dishes. And like, bro, they're like less than a cent. Your knives deserve better than that, Nick. Come on. Anyways, I digress. Um, so I'm just cleaning off the blade here. And uh, I'm just trying to get all the gunction off of there. Okay. Uh, just making sure I don't have to go to an appointment immediately. Beautiful. Okay. So there's that. Next thing, I'm going to go ahead and use a uh, new Q-tip because I'm worth it. And dip it in some rubbing alcohol because I'm worth it. <laughs> it sounds like bad Pinterest inspirational quotes, right? You're worth a new Q-tip, Nick. Um... Anyways, so we're just cleaning that off. I'm also going to use this Q-tip to get all up inside here because this is another area where gunk can collect. And as you see here, whereas I pull this Q-tip out, um, gunk definitely does collect down in this area here. So let's go ahead and pull this guy out. Beautiful. And just kind of getting in there and cleaning. Just removing all of the stuff that might have accumulated around the... Um, uh, what's another thing I can use to get up in there? They're removing all the stuff that might have accumulated up around, the, uh, behind the washes, that is. Actually, I can just fold this. That'll work. That'll get me in there. And so I'm just getting in there and I'm cleaning. I'm just removing any remaining stuff. It's pretty clean in there. This is relatively factory fresh. Um, actually just got to pick this guy up at, um, the USN show. Uh, Doug Ritter of, well, Doug Ritter, um, handed one to me. And, you know, I gave him my full disclaimer, etc. Um, but nevertheless, uh, he wanted me to check one out because he's proud of it. And I've actually reviewed a Doug Ritter Griptilian before, except the last one was made by Benchmade. And, of course, this isn't a Griptilian. This is the Ritter uh, RSK. And, of course, this isn't an Axis lock. This was cleared, by the way, by the original maker of the Griptilian. Um, it's not a clone or anything like that. I mean, you could argue that it looks very similar, but Benchmade stopped making it, and so Doug brought the design to another company. And uh, here we go. But anyways, um, yeah, so this is fresh from Doug. Nice guy. Really passionate. Really, really passionate. Not just as a knife maker, but as a knife advocate. Doug Ritter is many of you are probably aware, is actually not only a, a an excellent knife maker, but he is a, um, he runs Knife Rights, which is a, an advocacy organization for the uh, pocket knife and, uh, well, just general knife community. Um, more specifically, a legal advocacy, ah, advocacy organization. His group has been working alongside other folks, like the American Knife and Tool Institute, although they have very different strategies. Um, but anyways, uh, Doug has been working pretty tirelessly to try and remove some of the worst of the knife laws. And I mean worst, not in terms of like, I mean, in many cases, most restricted, but also the ones that are just really poorly done. Like in New York, they had the, um, the gravity knife thing going on for a while. And let's be real here. This, like many knife laws, was born in, in racism. Um, it was, you know, it's designed to basically allow people to shake down people that they, you know, uh, without a whole lot of 
it's poorly applicable to a, it's just, it's a bad law. It's usable against anybody for just carrying a daily tool. Um, and so, you know, he, he was one of the, knife rights was one of the driving forces, if not the driving force behind getting that law knocked down um, and removed. And that's a wonderful victory. And so, you know, if you are a regular user of pocket knives, it's not a bad idea to think about supporting knife rights because they do very nice work. Uh, and work that benefits not just knife geeks, but also common people who are dealing with laws that make it hard for them to carry something that makes their life easier, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what these are. These are tools. I mean, certainly there are people who are making knives that are designed as weapons first and foremost, but in my mind, all of these things, they're just everyday tools for everyday life. And so I wanted to uh, give him a little shout out there. But like I said, he also happens to be quite the knife designer in his own right. So, um, very, very nice. That's one of the things that I, well, I like many parts about this channel. Um, what I'm doing, by the way, I, I should probably describe rather than soliloquize. Um, the, um, what we've got here is I put one of the washers into this little area here. Now the next step is going to be to insert the blade into this little area here. Um, I should do it in the right orientation. That's a good idea. But um, what I'm going to try and do here is get the blade in. Now, right now, it actually doesn't want to go into position. And the reason for that is simple. The lock is in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my middle finger down here, and I'm going to slide this down a little bit, and that'll allow me to get the blade into position. Once the blade is in position, and all of this is rotated properly, because you can see there's a little D shape there, what I should be able to do is just wiggle this pivot around sufficiently. There we go. Um, such that I can get the pivot in the rest of the way. Now, at this point in time, we have one washer as well as the blade in position. Now we reach the the, 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 the tricky part. It ain't that tricky. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a little lubrication onto that washer there. I'm going to slide it right into here. So now, what I'm hoping, desperately beyond hope to do, is to pull the pivot out a little bit, or well, actually push the pivot out a little bit, such that the pivot is clear of the area where that washer needs to slide into. And then I'm going to just go ahead and slide that washer into place. St you know, first off, I can start using my fingernail there, kind of getting this into position. But then at a certain point, there's going to be a little hole. We'll see some inkling of that hole. Here, I'll push it a little bit more using this guy. Yeah, so now we can see a little bit of that hole. So I'll just kind of grab it and pull it into place using this. Now, once I've got it in position, I can do the last step here, which is to again pull this back. Now I pop the pivot almost all the way in. And now I just need to get in there with this little tool here and move the washer such that, and sometimes it can help to rotate the blade a little bit, but just move that washer such that the blade, the pivot that is, is finally willing and able to pop the rest of the way in. I'm just realizing that I probably should have been using knife pivot loop for this. Um, there's not a major difference, but on washer actions, it's slightly better. Um, it's only slightly better, so this is fine. There we go. Um, I don't know if you just saw that, but I, I, I moved the blade and it made things align such that now everything is back together. So now what I'll go ahead and do is I'll throw some, uh, Loctite onto the pivot here. Again, blue Loctite here. And then I'll go ahead and screw everything back together. But anyways, um, the, uh... Let's go ahead and put this guy... Okay, right now this is way, 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 way too um, tight. There is no blade play, which is good, but it's just too tight. So what I'll go ahead and do is loosen it up a little bit. Just a little, just a hair. Okay. Yeah, that's still too tight. No blade play, though. Let's go ahead and loosen things up a little bit more here. Whoa. Okay, that was a relevant difference. There is still no blade play, and now it falls shut beautifully. One other thing that I noticed about this guy is, um, well, actually, it's not quite so much as it, uh, it depends on the orientation, but this is a very easy knife. If you just pull back the axis lock, you can use a little bit of centripetal force to pop it the rest of the way out there. And that's kind of a cool thing. But anyways, good to 10. Then finally, the last thing I want to do is use a little bit of a thicker oil here. This is the 85 weight nano oil. And just put a little tiny bit of it on the back of the blade tang here. And that will allow the axis lock bar to slide. I'm sorry, the, 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 the 
whatever the heck we're calling this lock these days, uh, bar to uh, slide along the back of the blade more uh, smoothly. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, that was easy. Um, overall, I mean, it's, it's basically doing the same thing as... Is there even the tiniest bit of play there? There is the tiniest bit. So I'm giving it the tiniest turn. And now it is beautiful. Um, I'm overall compressed with, or compressed, I am compressed with the construction here. Oh boy, am I, I'm like twice, half the size I usually am. Anyways, um, I am impressed with the construction here. Um, overall, it seems like a very nice piece, and I look forward to carrying it. I mean, at some level, look, it's, uh, I've, I've handled this knife before. Um, but this time, it's just being made a little bit differently, a little bit, frankly, in my estimation, a little bit better. Uh, and just based on what I've seen here so far. And um, I'm looking forward to spending some time with it. So there you go. Um, that is your uh, uh, Doug Ritter Hogue RSK Mach 2. Um, or is this the RSK-01? I forget. Either way, they, I'll, I'll put the number in the, 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 the video title. But there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you. And have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.